For the Red Komodo, the best way to shift the balance between noise and clipping protection is with the ISO. This comes straight from the Red's handbook. So it's pretty astounding that you might be hearing this for the first time. <laughs> you and me both. Everybody's doing it. This is the second part of your Red Komodo's exposure strategy and a follow-up on the ISO tonal range redistribution video that I did previously. Please be sure to check out both these videos. And don't forget to give some love to the like button and subscribe to the channel. More the merrier. Amen. The idea of exposure should be centered around post-production. Your post-production needs should dictate your exposure levels and ISO choices. For instance, is a dark toned region intended to be substantially brightened afterward? What are the ISO implications of that? Well, in this case, you might consider using a higher ISO so that as the darker tones of the scene are pulled up, the highlights are more protected. Or is minimum noise critical for visual effects? The implications of which might require you to use a very low ISO that has a low amplification and subsequent noise floor. These are the steps and thought processes you should be taking to get the image technically right during capture. Now let's take a look at how this works through the use of the ISO. This example shows two stop change in the ISO speed. So let's just say the first step with the lesser highlight protection is 400 and the last is 1600 ISO. At 400 ISO, you have four stops still highlight clipping, meaning that anything above middle gray or all the highlights have four stops till they become clipped. At 1600 ISO, you have an additional two stops, making the total number of stops above middle gray and for all the highlights, six. Due to the nature of stops of light, every stop of light is a doubling, technically meaning that going from four stops to six stops will have a 400% increase in highlight clipping protection. Or in other words, going from 400 ISO to 1600 ISO is going to give you a 400% increase in highlight roll of performance and highlight quality. That's hardly insignificant if you ask me. Unlike on other camera brands, the ISO on the Red Komodo will not change the physical light levels of the sensor and will not stop any clipping. But if clipping is occurring, it will now on paper appear 400% smoother due to the broader tonal range for the highlight roll off. This is also a substantial change in exposure, four times increase in brightness. So the two whole stops will require physical light compensation that the sensor is receiving. Implications of which are that you will need to use a higher aperture or have more ND filters handy, especially in sunny outdoors, to fully take advantage of this ISO feature on the Red Komodo. Now let's look at the noise protection. If we follow the same allocation here as previously, you can see that 400 ISO is still two stops below 1600 ISO, which will technically make it have four times less noise, with every amplification stop being to the power of two. Meaning that as you cycle through the ISO range of the Red Komodo, at the lowest ISO value of 250, you're going to have the cleanest noise floor, technically making ISO 250 Komodo's native ISO as per the noise performance. And on the other side of the spectrum, at the absurd ISO setting of 12,800, you're going to have the worst noise floor. Red doesn't recommend going past 2000. Personally, I would say that in a very sunny, bright scene, you could probably get away with 3200 as the light will soak up the ISO amplification but you will certainly have to do some post denoising using ISOs above say 1200. Again, this will depend on project needs and or personal preference, though it is worth to note that due to the nature of noise doubling with every ISO speed stop and Komodo not having any in-camera denoising, it becomes overpowering quite quickly and can creep up on you if you are not careful. Especially using small monitors, you might not see its full presence till post. Remember, noise is not grain and unlike grain is much less pleasing. For instance, I usually add film grain to my work after denoising it to add a softer, more cinematic, organic feel. But it might not be for everyone. In any case, with 16-bit RAW, post-denoising with something like neat video 
works perfectly, even if my computer hates it. Low contrast scenes generally do not need much highlight protection, so you can potentially go as low as 320 ISO to fully take advantage of its noise floor benefits. This is the tricky part though, if you will, the rub. As you go down the ISO to take advantage of the lower noise floor, you are hindering the highlight clipping protection. Conversely, going up the ISO will increase the unfiltered amplification and overall noise levels, especially in darker, already noisier portions of the scene as they become brighter and noise becomes more visible. This is the trade-off you have to keep in mind and work within its parameters as you set your optimal ISO level. RED recommends a safe ISO range of 640 to 2000. This offers the best balance between highlight protection and low image noise. Going outside this range will leave much less room for error as your highlight performance become hindered or noise floor starts becoming overpowering. This is why exposure is not an easy proposition. Even just setting the ISO is an imperfect balancing act with its own limitations. Probably why many stick to ISO 800 as RED themselves recommend it as a good starting point, or if you are not sure which way to go. As discussed in my previous video, ISO 800 has the most equilibrium protection for both highlights and noise, but your optimal ISO will depend on image content and post-production needs. Feel the rhythm. I encourage you to experiment with the ISO setting. It is a powerful tool in the Red Komodo arsenal that will help you achieve superb low noise levels or unmatched clipping protection and highlight roll-off, and will surely set you apart from the rest. That's why you've got to make your own moves. 